It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So I want to now transition to 30-year-olds. <laughs> and we, we had a lot of conversation about this picture that Daniel picked out because basically, Bo, th- this is you. Yeah, you me, are in this messy middle as we speak. This The 30s is a very unique decade to be in because a lot of life happens. Life gets more complicated. Things get more stressful. You got kids. You got stuff pulling you all over. So we think that there are a lot of pitfalls that you can fall into your 30s. And when the world around you is crumbling as well, it just exacerbates the issue. So we said, okay, what are some of the things that 30-year-olds should really be aware of and think about? Uh, Number one that we came up with was cash reserves. Now, I think it's interesting. We did this in the 20s. We mentioned have your deductibles covered. We get it when you're younger. Cash is going to be hard. You're still getting your 10,000 hours. But by the time you're in your 30s, we're thinking, hey, you're, you're starting to get some traction at work. Yep. You're starting to figure some things out. You need to go beyond just having deductibles covered. You need to have actually three to six months of cash reserves. So don't overlook that opportunity. Uh, the next one at the 30s, as, again, your financial circumstance, your life changes, so too do the risks that are present in your life. So we think that appropriate risk management is something that you have to make sure you're taking care of in your 30s. And what we mean is life insurance, if there are folks depending on you, if you have a spouse that depends on your income, if you have children that depend on your income, and if you were to get hit by a bus tomorrow and that income went away and they would be negatively affected, you have an insurable interest. So you want to make sure you have your life insurance, your disability insurance. We statistically know that we are more likely to become disabled over our work, working careers than to have premature death. And then also estate planning. This is one that all of, I feel like my friends miss because we think in our 30s, we're still living in that sort of warrior phase. We're still yeah. a little immortal. We're invincible. If it's difficult for you to have the conversation of who's going to take care of your kids if you're not here or where you want the money to go if something weren't happen to you, if it's hard for you and your spouse to have that conversation, just imagine how difficult those conversations would be if you weren't around to speak for yourself. So make sure you have the basics covered on risk management. That is, that is good advice. We've done so many shows on it. Go check it out. If this, if this, is, if this resembles you, get up and make something happen with yep. this. Now this next one, Bo... It's going to sound like you people are going to be like, what? What's, what's a pitfall about that? Sure. And, and this, is, this is a cautionary tale. I tell people about this one all the time. Paying off your mortgage early. If you're in your 30s, you realize 20-year-olds, it's great to have compounding interest in the wind at your back, growing your dollar, army of dollar bills so that essentially, let's think about this. When you invest in your 20s, it's essentially you're only contributing like 5 to 10% of your future retirement assets. Yep. The rest is coming from growth. Guess what happens in your 30s? It is your last stop on that easy money because mm-hmm. every dollar you invest in your 30s also has multiplier effects with compounding yep, in interest. double digits. What are we in right now? We are in the lowest interest rates mm-hmm. in like history yep. for mortgages. So, And I have, by the way, on the editing room floor of the Money Guy Show, I had two slides with comments from <laughs> listeners. Now, look, you guys know, I, y'all made me cut them out of the show notes, so I'm not going to read them. But there are people, one of the gentlemen shared that all through the 2000s, he prepaid his mortgage, mm-hmm. then lost his job, had to do a short sell, and he screwed up his credit. Mm-hmm. And he felt bad because he locked up his money. And here we are, fast forward, he's having job issues now, and he's saying he's going to now pay off his I'm like, whoa. You might need those cash reserves. So this is a twofold issue. When you're in your 30s, it's the messy 30s. You have kids. You have lots of obligations. You might, because realize when you pay that house off, it's great once the house is fully paid off. But if you start paying, prepaying your mortgage, you have an emergency like you lose your job. It's not like it's easy to go get the money back out of the house. And I'm telling you, you're still totally missing out on the opportunity of what the potential, the opportunity cost for every dollar in your army of dollar bills is, there will be plenty of time in your late 40s to pay the debt off early. Focus on building your armies and not getting in a hurry to pay off the low interest rate debt too soon. We've even done a show in the past called A Tale of Two Savers, and Ravi, maybe we should put a link to that in the description for this, for this show or for this highlight. Actually walking you through what that $1 that retires mortgage debt versus that $1 that goes into your army, how different those two scenarios are, it's mind-blowing. When you're in your 30s, you have to make sure you understand and that then difference. one last point. All over our comments section are people talking about taking retirement assets oh, yeah. 
and paying down their mortgage. Guys, you realize when you pull money out for retirement, yes, it might be penalty free under this coronavirus mm-hmm. distribution. You still got to pay income taxes. Yep. So to get seventy dollars, you're going to have to take a hundred mm-hmm. out of your portfolio. So all of a sudden, if you have a four hundred one k with twenty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars that you want to take to pay off your mortgage, realize it's probably going to net you thirty to thirty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But you're going to take fifty and pay income. It's it's just going to be a disaster. It's going to be a hole that you're going to have a hard time recovering from. So be very careful of that. Yep. Um, let's move on to the next one because this is a, this is one that I love. The slide that was put in on this is kids' education. Yeah, you know we all once we have kids, they become our top priority as they should. Well, a lot of times we uh, incorrectly appropriate uh, incorrectly assume that because our kids are now our top priority, they should also become our financial top priority. So immediately, as soon as Junior or Juniette is born. <laughs> We got to start funding that. Why'd y'all laugh at that? That's a good name. Yeah. We got to start funding those college accounts. We got to start getting them and start building them up, even when that's not exactly where they're supposed to fall inside the financial order well, operations. We've, and you and I have done enough flights, and you, we've made the analogy on for past shows is that you know, they always tell you when you're on an airplane, Please put the oxygen mask on your face first before you help the kiddos out. And it's kind of the same way with your retirement. Your kids can go get scholarships. Your kids can go get student loans. Retirement loans, a little iffy if that's going to (laughs) happen. Here's what the actual new retirement – what is funny, I've been making this joke for years. And I am so happy that this has come full circle that what I have threatened – talked about and envisioned has actually come true. Uh As I tell people all the time, look, you can get this right or you can get this wrong, but if you get it wrong, you just need to let Junior know you're moving in the basement (laughs) at some point in the future. And once you know it, the New York Times has an article that just came out. One of my one of our clients, Money Guy family members, sent this to me. I loved it. Look at look at the article headline. My retirement plan is you. (laughs) If your kids go Mom, Dad, why don't we have more money for, for, for college? I want you to show them this and be like, it's because I'm not going to live in your basement. <laughs> because look at look at this headline and look at the picture. I mean, this sweet woman, her sweet son, I, I'm glad that they like being with each other because he's got her. That's the retirement plan for her right there. Now, look, don't miss here. So there's nothing wrong if you want to have an in-law suite or you want to have the, the, the grandparents suite and they want to come live with you. But when that happens... You want it to be because you chose to, not because you were the backstop. And the single best gift, you always say this, the single best gift that we as parents can give our kids is to not live in their basement in the future. Unless they they invite us to. to. (laughs) Unless you choose to, not because you're the retirement. My retirement plan is you. That that is a nightmare right there. So let's move on because this one is sad, but it's true of what's going on right now. Nice segue. With COVID. Because we just made fun of, you know, moving in with your kids. But it is sad right now because what is going on with COVID Mm -hmm. is we're telling people who are in the at-risk category, that's people, you know, 65 and older um, who have underlying conditions, we're kind of isolating them. I mean, it is complete isolation. So make sure that you're not losing touch with loved ones when we're facing such a unique time. Yeah, it's one of those things where just we we kind of forget about it, especially those of us as parents. You know, we're, we're not able to go see the grandparents and that kind of stuff. It probably is pretty important that we do do the FaceTime phone calls, the Zoom phone calls, just so that we can keep those bonds attached. Because we don't, we don't really know, depending on what part of the country you're in, when things will go back to normal. So we just want to make sure that we don't lose track of that because uh, some of those relationships are going to be hard to, to build back up if they go away. And then we put this one in as a reminder. We spent a lot more time on this in the 20s. Mm-hmm. So I'd encourage you, if you're watching one of the highlight segments, go back and look at the multiplier effect. The, this is the last one in the 30s is don't forget, and please do not cut off your army of dollar bills. If you go to moneyguy.com, we have a great resource talking about 88 times over. It really shows you the value of what the potential is for every dollar in your army of dollar bills if you'll just put the money to work. Don't let this downturn cut that out to where you get to retirement decades in the future and go, what happened? Where did I go off track? Where did I derail? You're going to unfortunately have a lot more perspective of that's where things really went off track. It was right there in 2020. That's exactly right. And again, the 30s, you've already said this, as bears repeating, it is the last decade that you get a double-digit multiplier. Because once you get into the next decade, once you get into the 40s, it's single digits from there on out. 